listening to It's Complicated with your hosts, Jennifer Golden and Lauren Leonelli. Hello, Master Daters. Welcome back for another episode of It's Complicated. The struggle is real when you're dating in the city. I'm Jen. And I'm not Jen still. Mm-hmm. No, I just, I'm not even going to say who I am. I'm just not Jen. Maybe you're a ghost. (gasps) We have some questions for our guest about that, so we're going to get into it. (laughs) Guys, it takes a village, and we bring you this show weekly with our stories, tips, and expert guests to help you navigate the complicated world of dating and relationships. So help us in the podcast world by doing your part and rating our show and leaving comments about what you think. You guys, just find us at It's Complicated Podcast on iTunes. And rate and comment and tell a friend. I mean, why would you not want to share this wonderful advice with your friends? Because we're giving you really good tips on dating and relationships and sex, specifically this episode. So, you know, if you want to be having good sex, you need to share it with the world. If you're not having good sex, it's your fault because you're not sharing our tips with everybody. What if you're just not having sex? Like, Or if you're not, but that's fine. (laughs) There's other ways you can pleasure yourself, but we're going to have all of these things on on this episode in particular. But not only does it help the whole world have better sex and dating and relationship advice, but it helps us because it allows us to bring you guys sponsors and offers. It keeps the lights on for us here and the show running. And then we're able to keep contributing to the village that it takes for all of us to be a part of in order to date. I mean, do you do you date by yourself? You don't. You send a text thread to all your girlfriends, like, how do I answer this question? Or if you're a guy, sometimes you do the same thing. Like, I mean, how often do you have guys say, like, all right, I'm dating this girl, yeah. and I need this help. What does this mean? And yeah, stuff. so help us help you by sharing. Share the love. Five stars. And guys, we've got Sex at the Musical podcast host, Wet and We... Oh, boy. I need to... You've already, maybe it's the thought of sex. I'm already you. nervous, <laughs> I guess. We've got host Wendy Miller in for a modern day sex ed class, jammed with just the tips and all things sexy time like the birds and the bees and sex with three. That's right, you guys. Wendy Miller is an Emmy. This is why I think you're a little put off. She's an Emmy winning producer, comedy writer, and host of the podcast, like we said, Sex Ed the Musical, which you guys is really fucking hysterical and <laughs> has like cute jingles and it's just an awesome awesome awesomely produced show and uh, we can all see why because we've got an emmy winning producer here she's also produced and written for lifetime nbc oxygen tv land the oprah show no big deal the wayne brady show love the tonight show vh1 abc travel channel walmart abc family and paramount to name a few wow or to name like all of them (laughs) make us feel like we're accomplishing things wendy Well, we're striving for greatness in her (laughs) presence. And guys, in 2010, Playboy TV approached Wendy to create a brand new type of programming, upscale, network-quality, sex-positive shows designed to keep married couples sexually in sync. Wendy jumped at the opportunity to create a brand new genre of sex-positive programming for couples. I love that so much. Mm -hmm. And this is awesome, I think, because in Wendy's efforts to research and become a sex expert, she surrounded herself with some of the most well-known sex educators, bringing Emmy-winning producers from HBO, Fox, and ABC. She immersed herself in a world of free of sexual shame and learned about sexual techniques, pleasure, uh, new tools to enhance Ooh. excitement and communication between couples, and how to help women create the sex life of their dreams. Because like. Men always talk about how good the sex is, and the women, it's like they're more shy about it or something. So I feel like it's like well, that damn stigma and the stupid gender. I know it's like that all needs to go away. Wendy obviously is on top of that. Uh huh. And she's attended national sex conferences, dragged her nervous husband to observe suburban sex parties. Oh my god, that's a real thing. We have to. Yeah, it's not just more. That's not just on TV shows. No. Spent time living among swingers, toured dungeons learned everything she could about consensual non-monogamy and alternate lifestyles toward new lifestyle resorts, I mean, befriended sex workers, and embedded herself in worlds most people don't even know exist. Like, I thought these things were all made up. And also, sex workers is the term now. You don't say the other things. What were the other things? Prostitute, oh. hooker. Sex worker. Sex worker. Is that more dignified? No, because, well, yeah. they're it's like flight attendant. They're doing their, that's their job, and those things are, like, not their frowned upon term. Aren't they illegal? I mean, yeah, but still. 
They're sex workers. All right. And we can also talk about that more. Nice. Um, Wendy <laughs> is a board certified sexologist, you guys. She's produced over 200 hours of sex positive and sexual advice shows. Wendy is the host of the podcast, like we said, Sex Ed the Musical, and is currently finishing her memoir about her seven and a half years as head of programming for Playboy TV and how it changed her life, I can't even imagine, and marriage in so many ways. She's very excited about turning her the turn her career has taken and looks forward to her podcast and the humor and empowering women all over the world to have their sex lives um, be the sex lives of their dreams, right guys? I mean, that's like what we're all striving for. I'm just striving for somebody to have sex with and <laughs> at this see, point. It's, it's it, on a level of somewhere in the sex realm for somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone could have sex if they tried. So this is, we're going to help you yes. help yourself. Guys, she's done it all in the name of research, and eventually, the student became the master. Welcome to the show, Wendy. Wendy. Hey, let's get dirty, ladies. <laughs> oh, oh, my yeah. God. Oh, <gasps> that is just the way to get in. I huh? love it. Wow. Um, well, in interest of keeping things complicated, we're going to talk about how some of our complications in life, some of them have to do with sex. Some of them don't. Some I have mean, to do with a lack of. Some <laughs> have to do with a lack of. I think that... Um, you guys are like super duper hot. Like, how is oh. it? We have to talk about this. What's really <laughs> happening here? Well, I well, think Lauren's engaged, so she has sex. Okay, I do, but sometimes it's not. I mean, there's also my fiance has a nine year old, and so there's days where she's with us, and like by the time she gets to bed and we sit down on the couch, it's like game over. It's hard. So tired. Yes, it's challenging, yeah. and you have to make it a priority. You have to make it a priority. I think that it's like not waiting till the end of the night, but then if you have a child there, you can't. You have to wait till she's a bed in, in bed and asleep. So it's like, and it's a small place. It's so real small. Yeah. <laughs> so I understand why you wait yeah, until like she's knocked out. Planning and scheduling happening, and Jen is single, so she's choosy about who she's having sex with because she doesn't want to just. I mean. Uh, for me, it's a, like a whole thing that I I don't want someone even in my personal space if I'm not that into them. Like, I want them to go when I want them to go. I don't want them in like my, my like, and also in my personal space being my like body. Like, I don't I don't yeah. know you. I'm not gonna enjoy this. Uh, you who are weird that and possibly a convicted sense. felon. Like, yeah. I don't know. That's perfect. That makes Thanks. perfect sense. Like, it's like icky. Like for me, I just I agree. back in the old timey times where I was like young and fun and like drunk probably. Like, I feel like I was, like, more open yes. to just having fun. But now just having fun doesn't mean that anymore. To me, just having fun would be with somebody I actually like for it to be fun. Otherwise, it's kind of hellish. You're searching for something on another level. And trust me, there are sex things that happen, too, again, timing-wise. Like, even if, if James wants to do something sexually, and I'm like, no, not right now. And, like, he is kind of trying to, like... No, please, no, please, and like keep it, it takes me right out of it. It happened just the other day. I'm like, well, now I thought I just had to stop and tell you no, not in like a weird, like bad way, but like four times. And now I'm like, I don't, can you not? Like, now I'm out of it. Now it's like women are like mental, I think, very emotional and mental. And so I was just, it's like sometimes even if you're having sex, they're like things can go awry in the session. Yeah, that, that's the thing. The session. You, you really shouldn't be negotiating no. while you're fucking. No, the thing. I know. Can I swear on the show? Yes. Oh, all you want. Okay. Trust us. So yes. it's critical that if there's things you want to try, if there's things you want to communicate, you don't do it while you're lying next to each other naked. Because that's just going to mess everything up, right? I know, but like, let's say he wants to, I don't know, let's say he wants to go down on me. And I'm like, I don't feel like I'm showered and things. Like, sometimes I can't. I'm like, no, I'm not right now. Like, I'm fine. I'm all set. <laughs> but like, then he's like, no, but, no, but, no, but. I appreciate your enthusiasm. But like, now I've had to like, now we're talking about it. And I don't want to, but how do I, I mean, do I just say something after? Like, so if I give you like a gentle no, like move on because we don't want to be negotiating in bed. What's wrong with saying, hey, give me five minutes. And just going into the bathroom and taking oh. care of your downstairs business so you okay. feel good and you can relax. Okay. I mean, but what if I, what if I just, I mean, okay, is that the only answer though? Or could Absolutely I? Absolutely not. If you're not in the yeah. mood, then it's totally, it's your call. So then after I should say, point that out, like next time if I am kind of hinting that I don't, or saying no to something, can we just move on? Because it takes me right out of it. No like, means no. Yeah, no means no. Hello. Yeah. Also, then you probably feel bad because you had to even yes, say no. And I know. it's like that layer of guilt that came like, 
oh, now I'm telling him no, and I'd rather him have just taken the first no and moved Hello. on. But I mean, you can you can soften it up. I mean, when you're dealing with these people, they're generally kind of stupid. So you need to soften these things. These people being men. <laughs> yes. I love it. Yes. We so say this all I the time. I think the best thing for you to say is, you know, honey, I love you. I'm super into you, but I'm really not, I'm not in that place right now. I'm not feeling great. Um, can I get a rain check? Yeah. I mean, these are yeah. all things that you can ask for. Let them know that it's not him. Yeah. And that, you know, you're just not there. I mean, they don't realize. It's like, it, women have a lifetime of shame that we have to go through. And yeah. I know so many women, unless they're lesbians, so many women who cannot have orgasms from oral sex because they have been convinced that there is something wrong with their downstairs business. Really? Yes. A lot of women have shame. That's why they. That's why Summer's Eve sells douche for like you know 50 years when women are buying that stuff, even though it's terrible for you. Yeah. All of those products. There's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. And the problem is, is that we've either been brainwashed that there's something wrong with us, and that's why guys don't want to go down on us. I'll tell you right now, hmm. guys don't want to go down on us because they're lazy. Yeah. <laughs> because I, it's easier to go down on a girl than a guy. Oh hell yes. Right. I mean, I wouldn't know personally, but I'm just mechanically, yeah, like, no, giving a blowjob is a fucking job for a re it's called a blowjob, it's not, we say this all the time, it's not a blow vacation. No, it's not. There's a lot of real estate to cover. Yes! Trust me, it's uh. a lot easier for, for to go down on a woman. Yeah. And we've all been convinced that there's something wrong with us, and there's something icky about us, uh-uh, none of that is true. Everybody is fine, everybody is awesome, everybody thinks there's something wrong. Yeah. If you got a chance to look at 55 vulvas, you'd say that they're all different, they're <laughs> all weird, they're all unique, they're all beautiful. Yeah. There's no standard. Like, you True. look at these porn snatches that have been, you know, surgically altered, and you think, well, I don't look like that, there must be something wrong with that. Have me. they been surgically altered? Yeah, they oh have all goodness. sorts of... They, yes, they have all sorts of surgery. Right, because they're, like, too flappy, and they want to make them, a, like... Or, like, the ones that go out instead of in? All of the above. Man, is nothing... Authentic so, anymore. So what is the what is the a goal that everyone's trying to get to of a tightly enclosed vagina with no meat curtains anywhere visible? Oh my god. Well who would that benefit? I know what I'm just saying is that the surgically that the alter like people most most often like surgically alter their boobs to look in a general vicinity of like big and perky. So what's the the goal in the vaginal yeah, what's the perfect vibes yeah. that they're all striving for? Like, yeah. what do they all end up looking like? Like, totally minimal and, you know... Just little, like little... Yeah. Uh, like a little butt. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, that's not and real. a lot of us don't look like that. And there's oh, nothing wrong with I that. I didn't even know that that was a thing. So, yes. Yeah, so, women have shame. We have shame about our bodies because we've either... Either you look at the only, you know, the only genitals you can see are typically in porn. Yeah. And those have been surgically altered frequently. Wow. And mm. it's very rare for women to be like, I'm rad and I'm cool and that's fine. Because you know what? You are rad, you are cool, and it's totally fine. Yeah. And you just have to know that. Well, and then there's that like, okay, so you didn't shower or whatever. There's, did I shave? Am I showered? Do I smell like the day? Um, is the light on? Like, there's just there's so many things, things going on in a woman's head. That's generally. right. Generally, like, I don't think that men are really like that, are they? Nope. No, we need a lot more time to get yeah. aroused, and then we need a lot more, we need to shut off the day, and shut off the judgment, and shut off the shame, and shut off all the things that we were raised with, and that were pounded into our heads. And like obligations, and like how to get dinner ready, and also like I have emails to send, and like a million things. Yeah. Totally. All the things. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with anyone who's having trouble either having an orgasm or getting aroused. You just require more time, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And your male partners may not know that, because you've either been like, presenting as having a great time or <laughs> accommodating them yes. for so long that like they've presenting. enabled them. Right? No, it's it's actually very true. But they want to be, guys want to be awesome in bed. Everyone wants to be a great sex haver. Yeah. So you need to give them the tools. Help them out. Help the guy out. Maybe they yeah. don't want to take directions, but yeah. you could say, hey, I'd really like them to do that, or hey, I need a little bit more time. They're, every, every guy wants to be like a hero in bed, right? Yeah. Right. And I actually wish that we could like have like a female summit about like how to retrain guys for like the mistakes women made in the past where they acknowledge that these people were good in bed even though they weren't or like that they were good kissers even though they weren't like we got to reverse time and make yeah. them better let's just make men great again let's just start from now let's stop enabling guys let's stop pretending to be having a great time yeah let's be honest let's love our bodies and let's just say hey i'm really glad you're here you're super great but i need a little bit more time can you do this can you do that and advocate for yourself you know how many women can do that not a lot. No. It's like hard to, 
I mean, again, you don't want to be like negotiating in bed. I mean, I guess there's a way to be very cut and dry about it, but it's like, yeah, I feel like it's even hard to talk in bed. Like yeah. sexy talk? Yeah, it's like not natural for me. Oh, dirty talk? Yeah, yeah. It's like not natural for me. And I know like it's not that big of a deal. It's just like not, I don't know. It just. Didn't... I feel the same way. I was raised like speaking, I would say, properly like I don't know like a 50s household like it was very pleasant in my home so like if I said damn people were like what like so I I just didn't hear it and to me it's so uncomfortable like basically I just curse and that's about it but I don't like say dirty things I don't even like vulgar comedy I don't like vulgar things I have a yeah. friend who was having sex with their their husband at the time and he said hey so you speak dirty and she's like ah I was like come on you speak dirty and she's like um okay uh you're a fucking asshole because you never empty the dishwasher <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, that's not what that's I meant. That's not what I meant. <laughs> but she, you know, it wasn't her thing either. But yeah. it's something that you can practice. That's actually really fun. Is you it? Can, yes, it's I, very how fun. How are you? Okay, there is a if lot it's of questions about that. It's uncomfortable for you. How does that become fun? Is it desensitizing? And or, how you know do the word you I'm go do everything that's uncomfortable for you? Because eventually it won't be uncomfortable. Well, you also have on your podcast, um, you've had, there was a woman that um, came on and she was very, very like vanilla housewife and mm -hmm. then she became like a threesome picker-upper. Yeah. Um, and what was the show? The Sexually Adventurous Woman. Yes. Yeah. And she didn't, it's like, I guess she was afraid, but she didn't even know that once she started doing it, it was something that she actually liked. That's right. Her husband, so. first of all, her husband convinced her she, was, she was bisexual. bisexual. And she was like, Do you think oh. she really is, though? I mean, I know her. She is bisexual. I feel like she. But just... she wasn't until he. But it was like, yeah. it wasn't It wasn't a long climb, okay? I mean, it was probably just something she never really thought of. But then, right. they, you know. But you'd be surprised how many things that you have given power to that, you know, it's like so many things you've given power to that you just won't go near. And sometimes just trying them, just once, as long as it's consensual and it's not something that's against your core values, mm -hmm. uh, you might find that either A, you really enjoy it, or B, okay, not my, no big deal, but I tried it. It's like right. it, just, it takes away its power. So how do you, for example, with dirty talk, mm -hmm. how do you then start, I mean, what are some like gateway phrases, I guess, you could use? Because if it all feels not natural or not authentic to you mm -hmm. or something that just like i don't know it could maybe take you out for a second you know then how do you or make like, you feel silly because it's unnatural or, right. or shock your partner too because they might be like what the fuck mm -hmm. like that's not so how do you like slowly ease your way in to then opening the door to maybe the next time it's bigger or different or to the point where then you're like i don't like it but how would how do you dip your toes in the water I think uh, I think the first time I ever did it, I was afraid. I was also afraid that I was going to look like a, a, a complete idiot. Yeah. And what I did is I channeled my sluttiest friend. And I thought, what would my slutty? I had this friend that was driving down Beverly Boulevard. She pointed at the Bev Center. She said, "You see that guy with those giant billboards on the Bev Center? You see that guy, the Calvin Klein model?" I'm like, yeah. She goes, I fucked him last night. I mean, this friend of mine was like everything. She was just a party She's your Samantha. girl. She Whoa. Gets, she was my Samantha. <laughs> And so I would kind of think, what would she say? Like, because she was just fearless. Yeah. And again, it's all about we have so much judgment coupled with sex, and we've got to uncouple them and make sex more about play yeah. and fun. Right. Because he ain't thinking about that. He's just really grateful to be there with you. Yeah. And if you start getting freaky, as long as it's not, like, crazy over the top that he can't handle, he's going to be down for it. Yeah. He is. Hmm. I know. I'm like, try. I mean, there's some, you know, it... Yeah. I just, sometimes you could just say what you're going to do to him. Okay. Say, you know, you know, I really, I'm going to blah, blah, blah. I really like blah, blah, blah. And, and like, like, oh, that's a good, that's a good, like, gateway. Like, I'm going to yeah. do this. Kind of like narrating what you're going to do. Yeah. But also, do you like when I do this. It's like not even like dirty talk because you're just saying what you're doing. Yeah. So, like, in the, if you're thinking about it and you're afraid of dirty talk, you just be like, I'm going to just tell you the things. Yeah. It might even be hard though because it's like you could say like um yeah like i'm gonna you know lick you here mm -hmm. and then do it or you could be what much more descriptive which could be way dirtier and instead of saying dick you could say cock i mean right. it could start getting like there 
Oh, then it gets real scary. So like maybe you just say I'm gonna do I do you like it when I do this and then do the thing that could be like the gateway Right like a question. So it's also like involving and he's getting excited and then maybe next time you could use it just more of a descriptive word There's no rules here guys. I mean, we're just trying to figure this I'm all trying out. To, I'm honestly asking for me I <laughs> would like, love for you to be more adventurous and maybe maybe when you're going down on him say, you know, I'm gonna, or, or, or whatever. I mean, you can start talking your way through it. Yeah. You can start telling him what you want him to do to you. Oh. By the way, which will turn you on. Yeah, because then it starts getting you That's thinking right. about, yes. That's okay, right. okay. I like that. So there's lots One of day I'll do these things again. <laughs> you will. You will. Like, baby steps. That's yeah. all. Baby steps. But it takes time once you meet somebody to get to that place too, because if, if yeah. it's already something that feels unnatural for you, you're not gonna like, and I doubt you're doing this, but it's not like we're suggesting go out with a guy in a couple dates. The first time you're having sex, see if you can dirty talk, because it's like you right. don't even know him. Or know? tell him what to do. <laughs> unless, unless, you know what though, there's one guy that I did date. I knew him from like my hometown. And once we started like having sex, which was right away basically, because I already knew him. It was kind of like that, and I don't know if it was because I was comfortable with him, or maybe he brought that out in me some. But I didn't have a problem saying certain things to him because I. It was like I don't know. It didn't feel weird at all. Even thinking back on it, I'm like, that's so weird. Why did I do that? <laughs> also, I think something happens when you are engaged or getting married to someone that oh. suddenly you think, I'm this person's wife. I can't be the total whore that I used to be. Uh -huh. And you need to tap into that total whore sometimes because that person's really fun. Yeah. And your husband or partner or wife won't get mad. I mean, I think that you're right about that. But for some reason lately, I'm like newly-ish engaged. I've been thinking like, I should probably step my game up a little bit because like we're going to be married forever. And like, I don't want it to get boring. And I'm like trying to make, think about. Well, instead of out of fear, why don't you step your game up a little bit because you want to have more fun. Yes. And that too. I do think that what's probably initially prompting that is me feeling like, well, this maybe sometimes our sex feels kind of like a pattern. Mm -hmm. Like it starts like this and it ends like this. Yeah. Because we know what we like. So that's it's right. like, and that's like a normal thing I would imagine. Totally. But shake yeah. it up, dude. Shake yeah. it up. Because then there might be other things you guys like that you add to it. Totally. But also I would say, I would say if you are on a schedule and you're probably just trying to like get it done. Then sometimes, yes. Sometimes the pattern makes sense because you're like, well, it's tried and true. We know yes, that this works. like if it ain't broke. Right. But yeah. then if you have extended periods of time. Yeah, it's not always where it's like that. I mean, yeah, sometimes it's like that, but it's not always like that. So when in those moments, just be, you know, cognizant. There's more time. Maybe we could be a little more playful. Okay. Yeah, maybe you can have a night with just the two of you and you don't have your stepdaughter. Yes. And maybe you spend the night in a hotel. Oh, hotel I love sex, that. right? I know. Why is that totally? It's just it's so different. It's greatest. It's like, but why? I don't know. It's, it's a, a different a, bed. It's like always like fluffier and it's a new yeah. place. shiny, it's like exciting. So and it's like a room. Room. about it. You're you're paying for a room with a bed. It's like, what else are you fucking gonna do? But also, you were essentially like removed from your responsibilities when you're somewhere else, and you don't True. necessarily have your computer, and you don't have right. obligations because you're somewhere else clearly meant to be somewhere else than your normal life so it sort of removes you from your normal life and removes you from the normal patterns and fears you right. exactly. in your I head. Mean, yeah. I'm, I'm in my bedroom and I look over and I'm like oh there's that thing I have to fix on the wall yeah and, oh right. there's that laundry oh there's the bills I need to pay it's like it's all a distraction totally you're in a hotel and everything is just zhuzh perfectly oh, zhuzh. and I love a perfectly zhuzhed room right? everything in my house is in the right spot all the time there you go well and in someone else's room it's there too because I mean they just make it perfection so yeah. why not have all the fun and like mess it up because then you don't have to clean it Exa either and then that too. that's another thing you don't have to worry about cleaning up any shit no it's not that there's shit involved unless that's something that you like then no judgment okay speaking of things people like and how you were saying like you might be like you should just try everything even if it makes you uncomfortable and then you figure out if, if you like really don't like it or not are there any limits to that like Absolutely. So, like, for instance, it keeps coming up. Ah, uh, this is, yes. I know exactly so where you are. So, there's a person that we have heard likes asphyxiation. Uh -huh. And at some point, like, we were like, is that just choking? Is that, like, almost death? We don't know what it is. So, we, like, have asked people, that, like, we've had sex with Emily on our show before, and we're friends with her, and, like, asked her. And she, so, she mentioned that it is a quite dangerous situation. Yeah. So, like, first of all, why does somebody need that? Why does somebody do that with them? Is it unsafe? Should people try that? But there's different levels of it, I'm assuming. But asphyxiation is asphyxiation. It's not like light choking. 
Is there light asphyxiation? I mean, maybe. There is light choking. But yeah. what about light? Have you ever had sex with a guy who tries to, like, sort of grab your neck or anything? I've like, never been I've approached never. that way. I, no. don't, I haven't either. But, I mean, I would set that boundary anyway because I'm not good with that. Yeah, I would assume some people like a feeling of like something on their neck, like a little light grab or a tug. And then I, I would imagine if someone's into full on autoerotic asphyxiation, they're going to have to talk to you about it because there's rules and things. But I don't know what those are. Like safe words and such. Yeah. Which, by the way, growing up when I, my parents were like, okay, if you're going to sleep at a friend's house, like, let's have a safe word so that if you call us, you don't have to say, I hate this person, get me out of here. You what say the same word. Yeah. I but, knew it. Yeah. Because I didn't realize safe words were like for sex. So I would tell people this all the time. They're like, that's weird. You had that with your parents. I'm like, <laughs> why? It's to keep me safe. They just used <laughs> the term for that. But really it was, that's cute. But now I actually wonder if my parents even knew what they were saying. Because they were so like pleasant filled. They like, were. Oh, no, they yeah. probably just put two and two together and made that up. But it makes sense. It's a word that keeps you safe. You safe don't word. know though. They could have been a bit more adventurous in the bedroom. I'm trying to cut down on that knowledge. I'm just saying it. I just don't want to know. I know, I don't like thinking about that. Please, Please. Mom, do not call and tell me that. When I was with Playboy TV, we had a lot of things that we used to say, and I used to use the term reach around instead of a work around. Well, there's a reach around for that. No. <laughs> and I just say it as a joke, because you could really say anything there. And oftentimes, I'd say that in a meeting, and, and like, if they weren't people who worked for me, they'd be like, what did she just say? <laughs> you're so, we're at Playboy TV. <laughs> right, so like, know like, your audience. But back to your question. Yeah. Yes, earlier I said you should try everything. You should try everything if it is interesting to you or if it is a little bit intriguing to you. Clearly, autoerotic asphyxiation is not your bag. No, I don't, don't try it. Potentially die. Some people, yeah. back door, no. Yeah. It's all about what you are intrigued about. Sometimes the things that we fear most are the things that we are most attracted to, right? And so you can think about it but generally uh don't try anything that scares you don't feel as if you have to do anything that you don't want to do it's it's your choice and you have a hundred percent say in what you do and what you don't do at all times and that needle can move you can yes. be in the middle of something and say you know what i'm not good with this and that's fine you're allowed to do that yeah you can change your mind you can totally change you your mind you can change your mind in the middle but yeah. i have a question about these things so like i know that they all have like a name and they have a place and obviously you've seen all the things in the world that you could see I don't know about that well the list we rattled off at yeah, least but I definitely seen that um so my question though is are those things okay is there and okay by like mental health standards like at some point is it crossing the line and you probably just need therapy or like sex rehab like are any of them just not that they would be like taboo but like actually bad for your mental health like, you, like, if you like to be doing this thing, is that, like, some sort of a red flag? Well, I think there's some judgment in this question, because... It's more just a curiosity, because I wonder, like, the asphyxiation thing. Like, is it, like, you you either almost want to not breathe or something, and then you want somebody else to not breathe if you're doing it to them. So, like, where does that come from? Why do you need that? You know, I don't know if this is really my core competency. Um, I know that... A lot of people are attracted to the, to the things that scare them the most, or they keep repeating patterns in their lives, and that often manifests in bed. But I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I really have the answer to that. I think I've heard that asphyxiation is it can um, intensify the orgasm. So maybe yes. there's some sort of a I need this to feel really intense, and maybe that that search for a massive feeling of intensity is where the root of the thing starts from. But but, but some people can only have an orgasm if they're wearing uh, like a, a furry duck costume. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's or true. Or can only have an orgasm if they're wearing a diaper, or mm -hmm. if they're with four people, or with they're with someone of the same sex, or with the, or in their yeah. they're like chained to a wall. Whatever it is, yeah, everybody's true. different. And everybody has a thing. Yeah, and I don't know exactly. Why everybody has a thing? Yeah, it's some sort yeah. Of thing. Story. They've got to find someone else who is okay with that thing. Right. Yeah. Or, or see someone else who will fulfill that for them. Yeah. Yeah. And there's someone for everybody. And what did you discover when you did your when you were like, okay, I'm with Playboy TV. I need to like know all of the things about sex. I need to immerse myself in this world. What were you surprised that you found that you liked, or maybe were like, oh, I could see myself doing something like that, or did you just sort of observe things? I actually walked in the door loaded with so much judgment. I mean, honestly, I was like, these people are... How could you not, though? Because, I mean... If it's not familiar to you, it's hard not to it's because not of to. everything we're taught and all that stuff. It's so. true, and I grew up in a pretty hip, like, my parents were very liberal, and, like, I had, like, no weirdness around sex. There was no shame. 
So it's like I was okay with everything, but I walked into that place and I, you know, I met like a lot of, you know, sex workers and swingers and all these other people who were just really just doing whatever they wanted. And initially I had a ton of judgment about them until I actually saw them living their lives. We did a show called Swing and you know, I showed up on set and it's like we had like the sex room and all this lube and all these sex toys and all this stuff going on and I was like, oh, these people, oh. And really hanging out on set with them for like five days. And I was like, okay, so let me get this straight. They're super happy, communicating nonstop, having tons and tons of sex, no judgment, no jealousy. They're right and we're wrong. Like it, everything inverted for me. And, and basically, it's okay not to be cool with what people do. It's as if it's okay to not want to do what they do. Sure. It's just a question of whether or not you think you're better than them or judging them is the True. problem. Right. True. There's a lot of stuff out there. I have friends who are into kink stuff that I'm not into. Right. Does that make them better or worse than me? No. That just makes them into kink stuff and me a little bit more And developed. you have to be able to recognize when you're either worried about what someone's going to think of you, but I think more importantly, how you're judging yourself. Yeah. Like what we were talking about in the beginning of the episode. Am I okay? Do I? Is everything okay down there? Like <laughs> you're already judging yourself and nobody else fucking cares. It's like... You're your worst own worst enemy sometimes in these situations. You know what's so crazy? It's like when you just said it, it took me back to like high school. And like when you think in high school or you hear somebody say something so childish, we're like, you smell. Or like, uh -huh. it's almost like you hear that in your head yes. coming from an adult. That's right, because shame can manifest in all sorts of ways. Yeah. And it's like it just takes, it's like you being bullied back in high school. And, but you're like an well, adult and you have has that like thing that real responsibility their ego meaning like the voice in your head right not like the that's right ego that people generally think like I'm conceited I have an ego like the voice in your head at some point in your developmental stages of life child teenage years somebody did or said something that made that ego go wait what is that and now it's almost like you're living the rest of your life trying to prove your ego right it sounds counterproductive but that's like what we do psychologically see I told you that I wasn't good enough see see that guy doesn't want to date me see I knew it right it's because, like and then you you're just stuck in a circle that's right. right because maybe your dad was unkind to you and so all you do is keep repeating that with other guys who are unkind to you because that's your where you're comfortable and that's where and so and then you can go see I knew it they all are the yeah. same way right. those people now can yeah. I get back to the labia for a second yes, yes let's, please please okay. do a couple weeks ago, I went to this class called Take Back the Speculum. Have you guys heard about this? No. no. What? Okay. <laughs> What's a speculum? The, the speculum the tool? is a tool that your OBGYN inserts in you and goes click, 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 click. And, and it opens up your Why is it, like, it reminds me of, like, steampunk times or, like, the, <laughs> what's that show that was on, what, maybe Showtime or... It was the doctor show. Oh, Masters of Sex? No. The other one about, like, the doctor with the four steps, but, like... It was the old timey times. I forget what it was. No. The but it something. Does, it's a very the archaic the tool. Something. I it does know. seem kind of wonky. Yeah. It seems super archaic. Like they literally found a, like a back alley doctor to come with their it's hanger. Like, it and looks go like up a duck bill and yeah. it makes weird noises. And That's it's, right. Or like a shoehorn. Yeah. But two together. Yeah. That's Wait, right. Why would you? What? Please explain this. Class. Okay. This so, is so odd. I, I love that we're harping on the speculum because it's really it's really not the point. Although this. <laughs> <is good>. All <laughs> right. So. Um, there's this class and there's this woman who is a, a doula and a body worker and basically every vagina of this best friend, a friend of mine. She teaches this class where she goes through an entire female anatomy lesson to the point where like there are certain parts of your body that were so-called discovered by male scientists and she refuses to use those names, you know, like the Grafenberg spot. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. That's not the Grafenberg spot, that's a urethral sponge or whatever. She, like, she refuses to use the name that some dude attached to female in that way, but she's talking about that. She's spot. talking about yeah. that. She, she, then you take a look at lots and lots and lots of labias and and vulvas. You look at tons of vulvas, pictures like actual of, pictures. Okay, uh, actual pictures. Then you basically, and you don't have to do this, but then you basically show everyone else in the room your vulva. And what happens is like there's this little things of. What, and you don't have to do this, but what happens is it immediately becomes totally normalized. Yeah. We're in within like five minutes, you could be talking about shoes. And it's just you, like someone's like, yeah, this is my vulva. And you know, I'm kind of self conscious because I feel like I've got a lot of ha hair here or my lips, da, da, da. and everyone's just kind of like, uh huh, uh huh. And like next, and it's like, it, it's nothing. I can see how that would like. The whole thing becomes yeah. normalizing yeah. and healing. Then, oh boy, she gives you a speculum and you she shows you how to insert it. 
You have a mirror. I know it's freaky. Uh, you have a mirror. You insert this thing, and you can find your cervix. What? You find your cervix. I went with a friend of mine who just happened the night before to say, I haven't looked at my vulva in 25 years. I'm like, you're coming to the stinger me tomorrow. Night. Yeah. <laughs> I hear her behind me, Wendy, come here, take a look at my cervix. Like, literally, I'm like, get over here, take a look at my cervix to my friend. And it, it was like? the craziest thing in the whole world, but you walked out of this room feeling great about your body, yeah. having a ton of knowledge. All of that shame that we all carry, it vanished. I bet. It's an amazing night. I mean, I feel like that would be completely and totally useful and helpful. I would probably benefit from that. I'm it's not, I mean, healing, I'm like, dude, it's healing. Also, they, they teach you as a child, like that these are your private parts and now they're they like, call them private right, parts. Right, exactly. Private parts. So like, you're, why do we wear pants? Why are there nudist colonies? Why are some people wearing pants in the rest of the world? Like, yeah. so it's kind of like you are this thing your whole life. And then you're expected to like go to this class and take off your pants. Well, because, because as women, right, we're told from a very early age, don't let boys touch you, don't let anybody see your underwear, don't, 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 don't. It's like, it's like, don't let anybody, don't let And then by the time you're actually sexually active, like, it's it's no wonder that we have trouble finding finding pleasure because we were told this is bad, don't let anyone look at this. And also, if you don't know what it looks like, I mean, the stupid diagrams they show you in fucking science class right. where you're barely paying attention, those are so not helpful. I or think sexual. Just they're so ugly. Like, you know, <laughs> there's cer totally, there's certain physicians in bed for everybody where it hurts or it's uncomfortable. That's right. And it's different for everybody. I know what it is for me because I feel like there's certain ways that I cannot lay and if like I'm if I'm having sex it it's like feels like someone's punching me in the stomach it's like pressure it's right. I, if I had a mirror looking up my vagina into my cervix I don't know maybe it wouldn't make sense for me to like visually put it together that then I could figure out positions that feel better for me if, if I know what I'm working with maybe or maybe not I don't know not every penis is at the same angle true some guys true. are bigger some guys are smaller yeah like you need to work these things out like if a guy's really big he can't get behind sometimes yeah true yeah like guys oh, really would, like hit your neck right like, but if a guy's really <laughs> small get behind you yeah true yeah right. so it's yeah. like everything is different and again you probably are thinking there's something wrong with you and it's just a question well, it's just of, a shame like I feel sometimes I feel like oh well if I I can't do he might like that position but I can't do it because it hurts so now he probably did that with his last girlfriend or whatever and so I'm not as fun so what would happen if in bed you decided to put yourself first and don't guys like that? Oh, I'm sure. Because but. then for them, if there's like an attainable goal and like they just want to win and like make you feel good. They want to be good in bed. But what, right. I mean like, what, how, what do you mean put myself first? So like without looking like a selfish lover, because nobody wants to look like that. Right. You don't want to look like a selfish lover, but it sounds to me that you're, a lot of the stuff you're talking about, and I know we're just speaking in sort of hypothetical terms, but it's always about, well, he's not going to like this or he's going to, he's going to yeah, think yeah, this, yeah, he's yeah, going to yeah, What do you want? I mean, not to, not for it to hurt. Okay. So when that's happening and it hurts, what should I just like, I mean, of course I let him know, but like, I just feel like it's like, I don't know. How many times do we have to do that before you're like, hello, that I can't, that doesn't feel good for me. But what if you, listen, I mean, you can really say, you know what? You're a little too big. This hurts. <laughs> yeah. True. That's a cute compliment. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Every guy's like, oh yeah, okay. I'm like, oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah, that's or like find that. replacement positions that are equally as fun, and maybe and like introduce new ones that yeah. wouldn't be that, but it would be like enticing for him to try. He doesn't want you to be hurting. He wants yeah. you to be having a great. Well, then time. don't keep doing it. Well, don't. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah, it's true. something that you should not. Yeah. But know, also, I think that I think step five of your eight step uh, hookup plan. Yeah. Is that maybe you need I think you're also <laughs> right though about like there's probably a part of me. I'm mean, sure there's a part of me that doesn't like maybe express like how badly I don't like it or it takes me a second to say well, I don't like, like it or whatever because you don't want to be you want it you're thinking about somebody else you're not putting yourself first you want them you're enabling bad behavior or so. you're also thinking like man I should be able to do this because everyone else does it why yeah. not me so it goes back to what you were saying about like that there's something wrong with you but also porn yeah it looks like nothing hurts and everything's great and we're all and supposed to do all the things share of that Wendy I yeah. did but so, porn is fake Okay, but like, can you tell explain, all the men that? Explain all why it's fake. Like, they're actually having sex, are they not? They are having sex, but uh, one of the best ways I heard it described was like, it's sort of like they're stunt performers. Like, these are people who 
I don't know too many women who some guy can walk up to them with like a 10 inch, you know, 10 inch heart on and they just start banging him. Yeah. We need to get ramp up time. Yeah. We need to get ready. And unless you are Caden Cross or whomever, it's the first porn performer I could think of, adult performer I could think of, you know, it's like we, we need ramp up time. These are not, you know, Cindy Gallup has, a, has the website Make Love Not Porn, which really shows how actual people have sex right. instead of adult performers. And you should watch that with your partner. Everybody oh. should be watching that content with their partners because it's real couples and they're having real sex and it's not presentational and it's not all that altered and it is real sex. And but probably shows like, real time for how long it takes to a woman to have an orgasm. All of the above. It doesn't yeah. just happen when you look at her or when you put it in. Are right. women having, this is probably a stupid question, but women are having fake orgasms in porn. Of course they are. Yes. I mean, it, it, many of them are having a great time, but yes, it's very presentational. Right. It's not real. It's sort of like saying, how come I can't fly because Superman can fly? Exactly. I'm still wondering that same question, <laughs> to be honest. If you can fly in your dreams and you can have sex with a ghost. Yeah. That is yeah. also another one of Wendy's questions. Can you explain to us about that, like, sex with a ghost? Is that a ghost of your I mean, past? We thought, we thought ghosting was bad in real life. <laughs> now you're, like, having sex with a ghost. So you had a guest on Paranormal Karen. Yes. And she was talking about people have sex with ghosts. Like, this is a I real thing. I was really intrigued by that. I, I was, too. A lot of women, because I think it's kind of like the ultimate fantasy for women. Yeah. So it's like, a fantasy or there's really a ghost? Why are there no ghosts having sex with me? I feel like no one wants me. Well, some people say it's just lucid dreaming. Yes. And so it's sort of, sort of like that state. Other people say, nope, there was an actual entity there. I, I do know that, I mentioned, I mentioned in my interview with her, that people are going onto eBay. And, and buying spells to attract ghosts. No. And like things to summon them. Yes. But Stop. I feel like Pinterest has those recipes. Thousands <laughs> of like four star reviews. Yeah. Like all of them are like, this is amazing. But <laughs> it's crazy. Karen did say though, like, yeah. just be careful because you don't know what you're summoning. Yeah, you don't want to open that door because you probably can't close it. Yeah. Right. And I mean, I think that's sort of the same with anything. Like with the good, there is the bad. So like while it might pleasure you in one area, it also might yeah. I mean, there's have the adverse effects and negative. You know, I don't know a lot about it, but I do know that if you have a sexual fantasy about having sex with a ghost, you should use that as just a masturbatory fantasy. Yeah. So you right. talk about the same that. Thing. You talk about on one of your just the tip shows, like how to master. No, how to um, have a threesome. Yes. Without having a third person, that was that was a game changer. That's like a ghost of a celebrity. Basically. Well, that's absolutely right. Yeah, because basically, my suggestion is, you and your partner should pick the person, and you can pick from a list of anyone. You could say Audrey Hepburn. You can say you know no. you can say anyone classy. you want. Yeah, classy. And then basically, you have sex with each other, and you act as if that person is there. And what's so great about doing that is, first of all, you find out a lot about your partner, <laughs> right? Because okay. You find out, you know, what they would really be into or what they're attracted to or whatever. It's also super safe and you get to pretend that someone's there. So it's an opportunity for you to really get really freaky without being afraid that there's someone else who's going to be upset. Okay, so your I would be having sex with my partner, but I'm pretending he's Justin Timberlake. No, and you're pretending Justin Timberlake is, is also there. Oh, but then how am I, oh, so I'm using like a toy for Justin Timberlake, maybe? Or, or, or okay, whatever, or he could be both people? Or just your imagination. Like maybe, yeah, so and then you also say something about like, like, I want you to go, I want you to get behind me, behind me while I go down on him. Okay, it's like, oh, how does that feel? Oh, that feels great. Oh my God, how do you like this cock? Oh, it's incredible. Okay, got it, here you go. So it, like it. it also involves the talking a lot of the talking, it, it's you have to narrate talking. what you're doing because right. there's not an actual person there. Right, exactly. Okay. And this is a gr another really good way to start talking with your partner. And it might be easier for somebody to do that than talking directly to their partner. That might feel safer you know, for somebody. You know, you're right, actually. Yeah. yeah. You know, and yeah, it just feels a little bit less like, okay, I'm a little disconnected, so I, maybe I'm a little less vulnerable. If that's, your, if that's what you're worried about, that I'm not talking directly to someone who is here. I'm talking to somebody else. Your partner doesn't want you to be stressed out. Your partner doesn't yeah. want you to be worried about them. Your partner wants you to be having a great time in bed. Your partner wants to be a, like an awesome sex haver, just like you and you and I. We all yeah. want to be great in bed. And so we just have to let go of the fear and the shame and all this shit that we're like worried about. You know, it's just like all the stuff that we as women have to walk through life where, you know, we're judged on completely different levels and we were, we're raised with so much shame. It's like, yes. 
if we could just let go of that, even if it's just in bed, imagine how much better your sex life would be. Yeah, and it's not, I mean, you're, you're pretty much a different person. Nobody else sees you in that state. Even if you're vanilla or whatever you are, when you're in the bedroom and you're with a partner, there's a level of trust and vulnerability that nobody else sees you at. So you're already like part of the process. You're already letting go a lot. And if you want to be letting go more, great. But like already keep in mind, you're already like halfway there most of the time. It's not like you're, you know, doing something with somebody that you do for everyone else. It's like a very private, intense kind well, of thing. Well, unless you are part of more of like a community. Well, right. I mean, I'm talking about people who maybe are trying to, like, expand their sexual horizons. Like, you're already halfway there just having the sex. Like, right. What one, do you mean by part of a community? Like, uh, it would only be that you're only doing that with that one person unless if you were doing it. Unless you're a swinger or right. unless you're, like, openly going to sex clubs or okay. whatever like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But those people, I mean, I think that they're already, like, reaching their sexual adventurous Yeah, they feel hangover. Right. Yeah. 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 Sure. I would think... That they're if they're doing it that. It takes a lot of courage to have oh. sex, to get naked and have sex in front of all sorts of other people. I mean, I think you would have to be able to let go and focus all at the same time. That's so many things. It's hard. I would. I but mean, you I'm get not, there, I, I guess, when never, you try. But yeah, I mean, and then if you get more comfortable with it, then it makes sense. Then probably that's, you know, when you have the most fun is when you're comfortable with it. And yeah. also, you can go to swingers clubs and not touch anyone else. There are all sorts of different. There's all sorts oh, of different really? types of. Swimming. So you can just be a looker. You could be. You could be a voyeur. Okay. You can also be an exhibitionist. You can just go there with your boyfriend, and just blow him right there in the middle of the sex room, and if people are watching you. That might be really exciting for you, and no one will join you. I mean, you have to be like, no, no thanks. Okay, so people might, you have to be open to people maybe approaching you. So it's like a big room, and everyone's just doing their own damn thing. It maybe depends on Or joining it. Club. Oh, okay, so there's certain clubs where there's rules that you already know before you go into a room? Well, no, yes, there are definitely rules before you go into a room. First of all, you're safe. I, I try to tell my friends this a lot. You, you are safer at a sex club than you are at a bar. Oh, I'm sure. Because a sex club, no means no. And there's zero tolerance for any transgression. And is there, like, security around or and something? And there are also very few single men. Like, almost zero. Wow. So, yeah, you, you, generally you can't go to a swinger or a lifestyle club unless you have a woman and a man. Oh, right. Okay. I or single guys. So single, you don't go as a solo person just looking to get to It's hard for single yeah. guys. Yeah. They, a, 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 there's like occasionally single guy night and they really have to prove that they're not douche burgers. But, yeah, it's traditionally male-female or female-female couples. Now, how do people find these things? Because, like, I guess, well, we're not looking, so we don't know where they are. But, like... You don't just drive down Santa Monica Boulevard and see, like, sex club. Like, is it on Yelp? Or is this just, like, an underground thing or hearsay? Yeah, there are a couple on Yelp, actually. There's a <laughs> there's a place here in L.A. called Club Joy, which is, like, I mean, that's what they are. They are a sex club. And they're totally legal. Why would they not be, right? They're totally legal. Yeah. Yeah. You're they're, consenting adults. Yeah. Being, going to a dungeon is totally legal. Yeah. Uh, it's like you are a consenting adult, and a lot of them um, don't sell alcohol. So right. You can, but you can bring your own alcohol, and they okay. just have mixers there. Wait, so do you pay an entry? Like, how do they stay open? A lot of them have membership fees where you pay to join, and then you pay an entry to go in there. So, okay. Awesome. So you have to show up, and you have to be interviewed, and you have to prove that you're a couple or, wow. a, or a single lady. Everybody loves a single, single lady. Single lady is fine. All the unicorns in the club, everybody That's loves That's what them. a unicorn is? A, a single lady? A unicorn is a single lady who... A unicorn is a single lady who has sex with both men and women. Oh, like, oh. like your friend. Oh, no, she wasn't single. The adventurous woman. Right. Okay. Well, also, that makes sense why she'd be called a unicorn, because she does all the things. And also because yeah. she's highly, highly coveted and very rare. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I'm a unicorn except for the female part. Do like you the think women most I am people invite, are looking to invite unicorns into make a threesome? Or yes. Yeah, I think that's it, right? Yeah. I think they're most of them. I mean, because... Yeah, I would I think it's just as it's just as many men and women want to have sex with a third woman. By the way. Oh yeah, I, I was right, and we learned that from your show because yeah. that's how she figured out she was bisexual, right? Women are less threatening, and I mean, I think you could still. I know girls that have had threesomes with women, and that they prefer that, but they're not at all a lesbian or bisexual. They're just like fine with it. It's yeah, fine. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You could be totally fluid. Yeah, and, and there's nothing wrong with being a lesbian or bisexual. But there's plenty of women who identify as 100% straight who hook up with other women. Yeah, because they're like, if I'm gonna have a threesome, I don't want like two. I just they just don't want it. Or I don't know, maybe their their dude is also like, I would rather have a woman, and they're just more indifferent. Like it's a third party who cares. Yeah, the guy yeah. is pretty much probably gonna say yes, but just have just have a man say he'll be okay with another male with another yeah. naked dude in the room. 
It's rare. Yeah. God, that should be a unicorn then too. Yeah. I know people call them a unicorn actually. No. That's amazing. (laughs) And also makes a lot of sense. Makes sense. Yeah. A unicock, it should be a, a dude in the relationship who wants his wife to have sex with another dude. No, That's a nice no, guy. A unicock is the the dude. Is the third. Really? He's the he's the yeah he's the he's the guest star is the unicock. Yeah, yeah. I love that he's a guest star. I mean. There, that's true. It could be recurring. Recurring, right? Oh, or no. recurring. Maybe Sounds you nice. start out as a guest star and then you recur. Um, what are, so in your immersing yourself in this sex world, yeah. did you find any like new sex trends that you were like, oh, that's a thing? What's that thing? For sure. Like, like what, what the fuck do we need to know about? Because, because I feel like. I've been out of the game for all, since November. It's like. That I one feel, time I did that thing. Yeah. <laughs> so the last time you had sex was November. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think, I mean, sex in general doesn't change. Obviously, yeah. people have been doing it pretty much the same way. Putting the P and then the G. Or, or the V. Right? In the back door. Or the back nine. <laughs> Whatever you prefer. <laughs> but what are, are there, is there anything that you're like, oh my God, what the fuck is that? And then there's like these terms and shit. Like, what are the kids doing these days? You know, the kids are actually, the kids are going to save us all. Because what's great about the kids is people in their 20s, the, the concept of gender and of like sexual, you know, uh, uh, it's like, Women don't, I'm like, I'm not straight, or I'm queer, or it's like, people are just 100% fluid. Yeah. Men, women, everybody just kind of like, yeah, whatever. Like, labels in terms of, like, what your preference is and where you are on the spectrum, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. So what's happening is you've got now a whole generation of people who are just open-minded, having fun. Group sex is very big with younger people. Really? Yeah. There's, like, a whole ton of that going on. A lot of swingers clubs, a lot. That used to be people in their 40s and 50s who were married and basically tired of boning each other. Yeah. But now you have a lot of younger, <laughs> That's people, your younger people who are like super down with group sex and it's no big whoop. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so you would go to a sex club for that or you could like invite people. private sex parties. Yeah. People have private yeah. sex parties all right. the time. Is that not still called an orgy? It's not group sex or it's the same? Same thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah. orgy, I always think of like some sort of like, you know, Roman time and <laughs> people wearing togas. I don't know. Maybe there's a forcep in there somewhere. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, speculum. That's speculum. Oh, uh, it's like, there's but yeah, a lot things. of people have, a lot of younger people are having sex parties. And, you know, we, you have to be careful. You have to be mindful with STIs, etc. And, you, have, you know, you have to be very careful because a lot of people have, you know, had the vaccinations and they think they can't get HPV, etc. Yeah. But there's lots of different strains and there's lots of, I think STDs are really climbing because so many guys are taking PrEP. So they won't. Yeah. And so you have to be really, really mindful about that. Right. Hmm. But I mean, I think those all those things are good that they're out there. But I don't think it is. It's an excuse to be careless when. No, you know. of course not. And it, and if you're at one of these things and you're trying to be sexually adventurous, saying no to things like that and having a boundary about like your health and safety is totally not going to make you. I don't think anybody would probably shame you in those situations. Oh, I mean, if if they were, you're in the wrong place. It's like somebody yeah. shaming you for wanting to wear a bike helmet. Yeah. Your seatbelts. Right? Right. Exactly. Like well, but people, like, okay, so going back to the stigmas and things that we grew up, like, when a guy says, like, oh, like, I don't fit in that condom. Or, or I can't come if I'm wearing right. a condom. And then you want to be the cool girl, and I don't know why cool girl ever became a term, because yeah. who decided that was cool, that you can just, you know, be Maybe reckless with your life. Maybe or give me AIDS. No, right. It's okay, cool. cool. It's not, not a cute look. That shit. Um, like... It, I forget where I was going to go. Well, I feel that, like, like, is that a bad sign, A, and B, like, you don't, don't, and get, how do you gracefully get yourself out of that, maybe? Right, okay, and, so like, you're be comfortable with... You meet a guy, you're yeah. getting ready to have sex, you say, hey, you know, you assume he's going to put on a condom, and he says, you know what, I haven't had sex with anyone for 10 years, I'm totally clean, uh, I had a sex, t- I, you know, I had a, I had a test pretty recently, uh, I'm fine, and I can't, I can't wear condoms because my, I'm allergic to everything. <laughs> What do you say? You have to leave. Yeah. To talk. Yeah. But also, I think that's because my 34-year-old self knows better. My younger self would have been like, okay, cool, well, it's going to feel good, and he can, and he's fine and clean, and that sounds like a great idea. Or even if you know, like, that might not be true, you're like, it's not going to happen to me. Like, you talk yourself into it. But if you're younger and you're not, where you're worried about all those things, just, I mean, there's really nothing wrong with just ending it right there. Right. And, like, there's no way that you shouldn't feel bad about that. Or the fear of being, like, too uptight or too rigid or not fun enough because you're not adventurous and 
free loving or, without condoms. What if you really want to have sex with this person and now you have to, you're disappointed. Like you still have to brace yourself for that aspect too. Listen, rules are rules and the only people who get mad about you having boundaries are the people who took advantage of you not having them. That's exactly. True. So if some guy is like, listen, I can't hit that unless I'm bareback, you're like, well, not, no. Yeah. Not today, Satan. And anybody who eventually is really interested in you or is okay with your boundaries and someone that you want to spend more time with is going to be okay with that. It's like, I do listen to this other podcast and they tell a lot of like murdery stories and they <laughs> always say, fuck being polite. Like if you're walking down a street and someone's walking too close to you and it's dark, like say, get the fuck away from me. Don't feel bad about like, oh, well, I, I felt bad. I didn't want to like overreact. And then he fucking pulled me in a car and raped me. Like don't fuck being polite because anybody who isn't actually trying to hurt you or rape you or murder you is going to feel bad and step back and say, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to whatever. So even as women, it's like we were raised to manage everyone else's feelings. Yeah, sure totally. Everybody's it's okay. exhausting. exhausting. We're physically built to acquiesce. Yep. You know, and it is exhausting. Mm -hmm. But nothing is sexier than being like, nope, these are my rules. I and agree. I'm good with that. Right. Well, but that's also like being a high value woman is what they say, or a high value human is to have boundaries. And because people then start to respect your boundaries yeah. and they adjust accordingly, or they can go fuck themselves. Well, that's Literally, absolutely right. Do you, you want to be? Do you want to be hooking? Do you want to be with people who don't respect your boundaries? No, not no. ever. Also, I really like. I like to address "go fuck yourself" as a saying, because. Fucking yourself is not terrible. So why go fuck yourself as a bad saying? Like, yeah. How is that an insult? Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Okay, have fun. <laughs> we should rebrand that. We should rebrand right. that along with "Don't be a pussy." Right. Because sure. I thought those were cool. Everyone bullshit. wants that. That That's is right. Like, yeah. And also, we've talked about this. It's like it's such a cliche thing to say at this point, but it's like balls. You can't even breathe on them without like killing the guy. Why would you so want to grow a pair of that? Don't grow a pair of those things. They don't do shit. They're way sensitive and they're wrinkly and stupid looking. That's right. Your pussy can take a pound. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> you should Which, want to be a pussy. That's right. Right? Yes. This is All a meme in things. the making. You know what? I feel like you're right, Wendy. These young kids with their gender fluidity mm -hmm. and sexuality and the thoughts about these kind of things, all that shit's going out the window. That's right. I think we're about to like get, we're on the forefront of some big changes like politically, sexually, just yeah. hu world human We wise. absolutely are. Yeah. Just imagine 25, even 10 years ago having such an open conversation about transgender people or being non-binary and people are like, yeah. what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, what's that? Now it's like, okay, got it, I understand. Okay, you there's like, you people understand. Right, yeah. And they're moving on. Well, hopefully they are. I mean, in some cases they're oh, not. Well. But no, I mean, they're still haters. I would like to know what all the letters stand for. Do you know? LGBTQIA. And now I think there's oh. like a couple more letters oh, I that got it. I don't know. Right, it changes at least weekly, I'm telling it you It does, right actually. Now. There's always another letter to What's that? I and A? Um, if only there was a place we could type in this question oh, and have the answer in front of us. Let's yeah, find out. Uh, I, I have a minds. transgender son. I should know this, but uh, well, shit. Um, Maybe we need to text your transgender son and ask him. I got it. Okay, what do we what got? What is it? LGBTQIA refers oh. to the entire alphabet, but actually, it refers to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, Ooh. or questioning, intersex. And asexual or ally. Oh, that makes sense. Well, intersex. Intersex is when you have both both sex organs at the same time. Frequently, people used to say hermaphrodite. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. I like intersex because yeah. it's inner and it's sexual. Oh, that's but now, fun. But now I would like to know about queer or questioning, and how that's different from gay or lesbian. Because you can be queer. Because a lot of people identify as being queer. That maybe they hook up with people of the same sex kind of every once in a while. And they identify as not being straight, but not being oh, lesbian or gay. It's, sort, it. it's sort of a, a kind of a middle ground. Yeah. And so queer is for people who identify as not necessarily being straight, but don't totally want to be identifying as gay or lesbian. Got it. Okay. Interesting. Um, and then yeah. what is, so also now speaking of if you have a transgender son, I have a question about this. Well, it's actually not my question. I think people wonder about this, but I think I know the answer. So your son is a male. Does he... Is he sexually attracted to other males, or is he sexually attracted to females, or both? So I don't think it's a general uh, hard and fast rule for okay. everyone, but he started oh, out... Well, obviously. He started out as a woman, and a lesbian, and then when he started to go through... Uh, when he started to take testosterone, and he had confirmation surgery, top surgery, something happened with the testosterone where suddenly he became very interested in men. Interesting. All of a sudden. Really? And apparently this is a very common thing. I was going to say that I, I would imagine that would be a common thing. 
Right. That's also got to be a very hard thing to like have all those changes at one time. Yeah, so like you, you change your body, you, basically you change go through menopause, puberty, oh. your like your <laughs> everything changes all at once. It's very difficult to deal with. I could not imagine taking all of that in at once. But I mean, what you don't it, it obviously is also feeling natural. I think when those changes are happening because he's feeling it's not like he's deciding I need to now like this or that. That's not how it works. So it's it's, it's just going with the flow. Yeah, and exactly. Again, this is someone who spent the first thirty plus years of his life feeling like he was in the wrong body. Oh, that must have been, I can't even imagine. Horror. But Horror. also having a mother like you, who's very knowledgeable in all of these things and open to everything, must have been at least a safe space or one would, one yes. would think, but I think, again, you still your own yeah. judgment on yourself, and I'm sure he was living with judging himself or not, I'm, I'm Because assuming. of the world we live in, yeah. probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, he, you know, I, he is not my birth son and I met him at a retreat and instantly, you know, he was a she at the time and checked in and said some things about, um, his parents that were just not accepting it were heartbreaking to me. Mm -hmm. And I just, I stood up and I'm like, I, st I said, I'm going to, that's it. I'm, I'm going to adopt you. I'm going to be the best queer mom you've ever had. I'm going to get all P flag up in this bullshit yeah, P -flag. and I'm going to be the greatest greatest gay mom of all time. I love P flag. And so What's P flag? Parents and friends of lesbians and gays. Yeah, it's for parents who have What is with these acronyms? Well, that's an old one. That's a really old well, one. That's an old one. I thought one. it P stood for a different P. No, P mm. flag. If, if reality bites tell me that oh. that movie. Yeah, that's cool. And so I took him to, that's you know, sweet. get his first shot oh. and I took him to, you know, buy boy underpants cuz like I was just the best mom I could ever have cuz he could ever have. Did you know that forty percent of transgender kids commit suicide? Oh, I I yeah. doubt that. Cause or, the, oh, that's. But I mean, that's like a level of depression and confusion and feeling isolated and different than everybody that not we, we How could anyone survive that without Think a support the system? Think shame that we were talking about that we feel about our fucking vaginas can't Just even potentially be a little dirty. And we are incredibly privileged compared yes. to right. someone who is walking I'm around in the wrong body and with the world looking Just, at them like, what are you? Yeah. Right. So it's like, we could check our privilege at the door when you look at someone who's yeah. in the wrong fucking body. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's not even a contest. Because like, suddenly no. your labia doesn't really... Who cares? Doesn't matter. It doesn't also, matter. do you want labia? Who cares at that point? I like, mean, I could get rid of mine. I don't really give a fuck. Really? I guess, you know, I, mean, I don't know what it is. It's not like it's doing anything there. You know, the clitoris is like the only organ that's made completely just for pleasure. Yes, that, that no one else has that. Yeah. That's, that's cute. Stay, but the other things too. Yeah, that's cute. We have that as an added bonus to birth. Thank you.